This is the plaintiff, Justin Ross. He says he owns a business where he places ATMs in businesses, and he placed one in the defendant's new bar. In June, he found out the bar went belly up. His ATM machine was gone, and the defendant is claiming he knows nothing about an ATM machine being in the bar. Hmm? He has the Facebook photos of the bar. You can clearly see his expensive machine in the pictures. And he's suing the forgetful defendant for the $2,500 he's owed. This is the defendant, Joey Acevedo. He says the plaintiff installed the machine by bolting it to the floor in front of the bathrooms. And the fire marshal ordered it removed. He called the plaintiff. Two guys showed up in uniforms with keys to the machine and removed it. Now the plaintiff's claiming he stole the ATM machine? Please. Who would steal an empty ATM with no money in it? He's accused of making a getaway. All parties, please use your right hand. Be recorded now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Leon is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Ross, tell me about your business. So I uh, place ATM machines in businesses and uh, pretty much collect the surcharges from the ATM machines. How old That's are you? I get paid. I'm 21. When did you get into this business? Uh, I'm fresh into this business only like a year ago. I got into it. Has it been lucrative? I mean, does it work out well? Um, well, so far I've had some bad luck. Yeah. And that, but you've been in it long, well, of course, a lot of that, I guess half of that time has been during COVID-19, but when you get a business that you're gonna put an ATM on, you go to a place and you buy a machine or you finance the purchase of the machine? Uh, I buy it outright. Right, so how many machines do you have out at a given time? Uh, at that time, I only had two. Now I only have one machine. Okay, so you find out that he's gonna open up a business, how? Uh, he had an ad on the Facebook Marketplace uh, looking for investors. So I messaged him and asked if I could put an ATM machine in his business. Was this business ongoing, Mr. Uh, Acevedo? Like, had you already opened? Uh, no, it was under construction at the time. And when were you supposed yeah, to open? March 1st was the grand opening. And unfortunately, 17 days later, we got shut down by uh, COVID. Right. Okay, so... He contacts you, he asks if you want the ATM, you say yes, you actually get paid for him putting it there, right? Don't you get paid? Yes, ma'am. He gave our he gave yeah. our company two hundred dollars cash. Two hundred bucks. And then the idea is the ATM's there, and the way you make money, Mr. Ross, is that people need to use the ATM to pay their bills and they pay three dollars and fifty cents or four whatever the service charge is, that's your income. That's how you do it. Um, so what ends, you knew that they hadn't opened yet. So you take it over there in February and who meets you there and tells you where to put the ATM? Uh, Joey met me there and we decided that that place would be good. We both decided that. Right, now what happens is you don't talk to him. Um, he doesn't open, COVID happens. And then when do you call and say, what's going on with my machine? because you know you hadn't put money in it to service it to get it going or anything else because he hadn't opened yet. So when do you reach out to Mr. Acevedo? June. Uh, he was still under construction in March, so I gave him some time. I knew COVID was going to slow things down. And then I, uh, I contacted him, and he, he says, what machine? There's, there was no machine or something. February 28th, you text him, hey, when are you opening? He doesn't answer you. Saturday, February 29th, because it was a leap year, can I get an update? He doesn't answer you. You text him a question mark, he doesn't answer you. March 1st, hey, he doesn't answer you. June 8th, sir, I placed an ATM machine at Desire Bar about two months ago, looking for an update, and he answers you, place closed down. Yeah. Where is my ATM machine, you ask? Why didn't you tell me? It never opened to begin with. He says, I'm at work, call me tomorrow. You say, okay, is a the machine there for me to pick up? There's no machine, I have no idea. The place never opened because of COVID. Just following up to get a date that we will conclude and get paid for my ATM that was missing at your store. Thank you, and he says, we are still working on it, we understand. And you say, it's been a week today, when can I collect payment for the machine? 
We are still looking to get all the information. Our attorneys need your receipt from when you purchased the ATM machine as well as proof of ownership. So you send it to him and you show that it's a $2,500 loss for you. And what? Crickets? The silent sword? Mr. Estevedo, where's the machine? What happened? The club was open in March. The, we called the number in the machine. Uh, within the next day or so, two gentlemen came in. They had keys for that ATM machine. Uh, I had them removed it because the fire marshal said that it was blocking uh, the access for the bathrooms and the kitchen. It had to have a 48, um, I guess, When did entrance. you have them remove it? How did you move it? Was it was removed. Why didn't you call this guy? You have a contract with him. There's an address on the contract. You have his phone number. He texts you, and he, you still have the same phone number because he texts you later, and you're like, I don't know, the place closed. Why didn't you call him and tell him you need to remove the machine? At uh, the time, uh, that phone that I had back in February, I upgraded, so I lost all the contacts because I didn't back up on my iPhone. So and why didn't you look phone. on the contract and find him? I should have looked at the contract, correct. Tell me who you say you gave the machine to, because in your text, you have no idea where the machine went. None. So what is it you're telling us all now? You called random people and told them to take it? We called the number of the machine. Uh, within two days, which we have cameras uh, in our property, uh, they came, we removed the machine, they had keys, they, they were able to open inside the machine. As soon as I find out that it was not even connected, it had no money, it had no safe. They said, oh, this machine is just sitting here, abandoned. And then they even what offered me to What company did you it. call? Listen to me, dude, I can't look at the machine and see who you called. Tell me who you called. We, we called the number that is on, on the sticker on what the What number is that? What number is that? It's like a 1 800 number, 1 8 number. It's like the. the Dude, the, are you the serious? Service. Are you listening to yourself? You can't even tell me, listen, I called this number, I did this. You have cameras everywhere in a joint like this. So show me the video of the people taking the machine. Yeah, the, the police department, uh, when he called, uh, they reviewed the cameras and it doesn't tell them much. It was just two black gentlemen, they had keys. Uh, we didn't ask for ID because they had keys for the machine. What did you just say? They two black guys? Uh, it's just two black. It's two, just two black gentlemen. It's always good, right. Okay, let me ask yeah, you a I question. Know, yeah, yeah yes, let me see the video for myself. Oh, I mean, I was, I didn't know I was supposed to submit it on uh, for this thing. I, nobody asked, so I'm so sorry. How about you just tell us who you gave the machine to? How about you do that? You haven't got anything, right? Let me ask you a question, Justin. What happens? Is there a theft market for the machines? That's what yeah. I'm asking. Yeah. Why? How can they use it? Because there there's was no, no code yet? Code. Yeah, it was brand new. Let me ask you a question. When he says, I called the number on the machine, is there a number on the machine? Yes, there was a number there. And I was actually on the phone the whole time with my uh, ATM. The person who got me into this business, he, he guides me through this business. I was on the phone with him the entire time. And we called the person together and we confirmed that uh, they did not remove They the never machine. got a phone call. They never picked it up. Welcome back to Beaver's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff says he rented the defendant an ATM machine, but the defendant is saying, no way. I actually gave the ATM machine to uniform guys. They came and picked it up. Let's go back into the courtroom. Okay, well, here's where the problem lies, uh, Mr. Acevedo. It's a $2,500 machine. You tell him your lawyers want the receipt. Well, what did your lawyers do when he sent the receipt? He read his text message and he said, oh, we're gonna put a lien on the business. And he said, let's take it to court. Uh, we were willing to work with him, but when he was- Well, where's your lawyer to, now? To willing to work with him and do what? Willing to work with him and do what? You owe him $2,500, fair and square. There is no, Correct. there's a contract. Correct. And let's see what the contract says. The contract says, the business owner must look after the ATM machine and make sure no one damages it while it is on their property or they will be found liable. So you're liable for the loss of the machine. So um, in what world do you get to dictate how you're going to, quote, work with them? What, what did work with them mean? We, we had the attention and to pay him, uh, Your Honor, but unfortunately when he was making threats to file a lien, uh, what do you mean threats? If I, he didn't threaten to take a bat and break your knees. He told you he was right. going to take legal action. Right. So if you have an intent to pay him, what you would say to him is, okay, here, let me respond to your text instead of ghosting you, and let me explain to you, can I pay you 500 this month? I don't see any of that. So I don't see any intent to pay. So do me a favor. 
Stop. I know everybody's hurting. I'm sorry that your bar didn't get to open, but it's free to answer the guy, okay? Instead of doing what you did. It's free to say to him, I am so sorry. I don't know what happened. I screwed up. I will pay you. Let me pay you. But instead, your answer is, oh, he started filing threats, so I'm just going to... What if you had something that was, if I took your car and I didn't return it, what would you do? Nothing? Please. $2,500 verdict for Mr. Ross, plus prejudgment statutory interest, plus your court costs. Good luck to you. So the plaintiff is going to get the money to replace the ATM machine from the defendant. Mr. Acevedo, what do you what do you think of the judge's decision? You're on the hook for it. You got to come up with the cash now. Well, um, I think that uh, it's unfair because um, uh, the gentleman completely avoided us for a while. Yes, he was texting me, um, and at the time, I don't I don't think I was paying attention to my uh, my phone like that. But uh, we'll do the right thing and take care of it. Yeah, well, you're going to have to. That's what the court says. The judge has, has decided you have to. So, Mr. Ross, you're going to get your money back now. Think you're going to go out and buy another machine? <laughs> what do you do? Uh, just happy I don't have to deal with this guy anymore. I appreciate that. What are you going to do with the money, with the 2500 Will you stay in this business? Most likely, but I think in the future I'm going to buy a, a route where I have more machines at once. I think that's a smart. Let me ask you a quick question. A lot of people wonder about this. How much money can a can an ATM machine hold? Oh, probably at least twenty grand. I'd say. Well, listen. Good luck to you. I, I hope things work out for you in the future. Sorry you lost your machine. <laughs> that's a shame. All right, let's join the judges for another session of After the Verdict. Here they are. You know, this was quite a production to get that thing out of this bar or restaurant. It took two guys. They got to weigh a lot. I mean, you can't just pick them up and move them. How did, so. think, I want you to think through what this guy said. He said, somebody comes and brings a machine. It's obviously expensive, right? right? It it's obviously has some serious worth. Instead of calling the guy back or looking at the contract, if you, you can't find his phone number because you have a new phone, instead of driving 10 minutes to wherever the address is that's on the contract, he literally just gives it to, oh, I saw a number there, so I called him. I mean, the, you think that really happened? I think they cracked the it open, there was no make, money, and they tossed it. Right. You know? The story didn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, but, the police answering a call like that, typically they're going to say, well, it's just a civil matter. But they could also, if they were aggressive, Absolutely. you've got an aggressive state attorney and an aggressive police department, they could come in and say, you know what, we've got enough evidence of intent. Uh, we think this is a grand theft. And wham, next thing you know, you're going for a ride down to the county yeah. jail. And that's that. So Timmy wants to know, hey, Harvey, when a person uses the phrase time is of the essence, how long does that give a person to complete the job? Well, there's no magic figure, but the reason you put time is of the essence in is this, that if you put a date that something has to be completed in the contract and you write the words time is of the essence, then it has to be done by that date or you can generally undo the deal. If you don't say time is of the essence, a lot of times judges will give you some kind of leeway or the other person some kind of leeway. So that'll do it for this case. Uh, litigants for the next case are inside the courtroom.